You can know the locations of every single legendary that drops and every single iconic that drops. But if you do not know, this, all those legendaries are pretty much garbage. Dear Skrarmi, I think it is a perfect time to talk about a really special hidden creature in the Cyberpunk 2077 that I like to call Loot Fairy. Now you see, you will never see those types of the creatures, but they do exist. You see this green item over there? If you look away, it becomes blue. And if you look back again, are you kidding me, dude? Green? <laughs> Let me try third time. When you look away again, you see, it becomes pink. And sometimes, it will even become legendary. If you have no clue what the hell I'm talking about, I don't blame you. But I'm gonna show you how to use those loot fairies in your own advantage. There are a couple of different things that I want to talk about when you're talking about the loot. Let me just clear those mobs real quick, but pretty much every single time when you clear the point of interest, you're gonna have a couple of different ways how loot spawns. There are three different ways how loot can spawn. First loot spawn is AI loot. When you kill the enemy, that enemy is gonna have a certain loot table. Which means right now I kill him, he just gave me bloody knife. When I kill him again, he might give me med pack. Third time when I kill him, he might give me green SMG and grenade. It really doesn't matter. But they have a really, really big loot table and we don't care about those for now. The second type of a loot spawn is a world spawn. This right here is a world spawn. Usually this is trash loot, like junk and cheap meds and stuff like that. And the third type of the loot spawn is, of course, inside of a containers. Any kind of a containers. Like this one right here. You see, every single time when you kill somebody, or when you reach the certain point of interest, the loot will be randomized. But the highest reward, the highest quality and the rarity of the loot will always be in the main room or in the bag that you actually need to loot. For example, in this scenario right here, we had to loot this bag right here. The catch is, if we loot this SMG, that SMG will never be spawned again here. But if you never touch this SMG, and if you just go away from it, little tooth fairies will swap this SMG with another SMG. What I'm trying to say is that there are certain containers in the world that are reward containers and they're gonna always have a high, higher quality item and that is the RNG that we wanna influence. There are two different ways how to respawn the items if you are not happy with the loot, with the reward that you are getting from clearing the point of interest. The first one is the easiest one, quick save, quick load. As you can see, this SMG is the blue one and it has 407.8 DPS. So if we quick save and quick load, that SMG will be respawned with different statistics. Now, you do not want to do this every single time. You kind of want to focus with choosing the force respawn of the loot that you actually need. Right now, we got the epic one. It is not a rare one anymore and we have much, much higher DPS. But like I said, you do not wanna force reset and force respawn this type of a loot every single point of interest. I mean, you can, but it is kinda not worth it. The times when you wanna do this type of a things is when you know that you will use that item. If you're not using smart SMGs, there is no reason for me to reset this every single time because it is a waste of time. But for example, this Widowmaker right here, I got it as a really, really lucky drop. I made a video about my build, so you should check this one also. But this Widowmaker has 3.21 charge multiplier. Usually, Widowmakers do not drop with the charge multiplier that high. 
and I was extremely lucky with getting this one from the first try because I did not know about this tactic before. But with simply quick saving and quick loading the game, you can influence the random rare drops that you will get. And those items are gonna be absurdly more powerful than if you're playing without of this type of a cheese. And before I give you the another example, I just wanna give you the another way of force resetting the items. If you're not playing this game on the PC, and if your game is not on the SSD, loading times are gonna be extremely long. And there is a workaround that so you do not have to sit in the loading screen that lasts one minute to do this type of a thing, you know? So right now we got the epic one. This is the second try, second time when we clear them up. The another way how to force respawn the loot is with simply going away from it. Now, from my experience, you have to run away around 150 meters, something like that. But I would say around 125 meters, something like that, the loot should reset. You can simply do this trick walking away from it and then the loot will reset. One more thing that is really worth of pointing out is uh, legendary loot. This point of interest is like random assault in progress. Like, this is not the top notch, the quest from the top of the shelf, you know? This is like the weakest point of interest that you can grind. So I highly doubt that you can get the legendary out of the rewards from here. Now I'm gonna give you the another example. This right here is the iconic SMG Fenrir. And no matter how many times you loot it, every single time, the statistics are gonna be the same. The reason why is because this Fenrir, it is the world drop, world spawn Fenrir. And since it is a world spawn Fenrir, it will never reroll the stats in it. When you're fighting the enemy that has 100% chance to drop some kind of a legendary. For example, this super cycle right here will drop legendary carnage 100% because they are fighting with the carnage. This is a really important thing to know. This loot on the Super Psychos does not work like in containers. Like I already said, with the containers, you can quick save, quick load. But for the Cyber Psychos, you can't. The way how the loot works on the boss drop Iconics and the boss drop Legendary is after you kill them. Which means, no matter how many times I relog, this carnage is gonna be exactly the same. But, if you quick save before you kill him, you can reroll the legendaries. So if we repeat this process again... This carnage will roll differently. I screenshotted three different versions of the carnage that I got with the three different kills. As you can see, one time it rolled with the thermal, one time with the electrical, one time with the chemical. Hatchet multipliers were different, critical hit damage was different, this one rolled the bonus critical hit damage. And it rolled without of the critical hit chance, while those two rolled with the critical hit chance. Which means that the moral of the story is that with this method you will get the best in slot legendaries, the best in slot iconics. You can know the locations of every single legendary that drops and every single iconic that drops. But if you do not know this, all those legendaries are pretty much garbage. And this is the reason why I started with a fresh playthrough. This is the reason why I am playing all over again from the beginning because I gained this knowledge. It was pretty, pretty crucial and it completely changed the way how I play and it completely changed my loadouts. And with my new fresh playthrough, every single iconic and every single legendary that I give a damn about will have best in slot stats and my builds will be statistically far superior than the people that did not use this technique in their playthrough. This was my quick explanation how to obtain the best in slot legendaries. I hope that you guys learned something new from this one. Subscribe for even more content. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one. Eroctic out.